Thomas Edison was born as the seventh and last child of Samuel Argent Edison Jr. and Nancy Matthews Elliott on the 11th of February, 1847. His father was the son of a Loyalist refugee who was a captain in the 1st Middlesex Regiment in the War of 1812. Samuel Edison Jr. moved to America and managed to find his way to Millen, Ohio. Now let's talk more about Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison was born in Millen, Ohio, but he moved to Port Huron, Michigan and grew up there. Thomas was the kind of boy who would wonder why geese lay on their eggs and would be found the next morning sitting on his neighbor's goose eggs, which is something that did happen. Thomas was a sickly child. He had a bout of scarlet fever and untreated ear infections that would make it harder for him to hear the rest of his life. Because of his sickness, the relocation to a new place, and financial situations, he didn't get to school until he was eight. He was put into the private school of Reverend G.B. Angle until the teacher said he was slow. His mother took him out of the school to teach him herself. So that's how Thomas Edison only received a school education of a few months. His mother gave him a more self-taught education and learned that Thomas had an interest in chemistry and electricity. He had a lab in his room until an accident. After the accident, he moved his lab to the basement. Before the age of 16, Thomas Edison got a job selling newspapers and candy on the trains, running from Port Huron to Detroit. He had a lab on the boxcar of the train until one day, the train lurched forward abruptly, spilled chemicals, and started a fire. Thomas Edison was smacked in the ear, further damaging his hearing. One day, Thomas Edison saved the life of a child who fell in the tracks of an incoming train. The child's father, a railroad official, taught him Morse code as a way of saying thank you. He got a job as a telegrapher for the Grand Trunk Railway after almost causing a collision. He left that job. He got another job as a telegrapher for the Associated Press Bureau Newswire as a Western Union employee. He requested the night shift so that he could spend his time reading and doing experiments. His job was short-lived because one day, he spilled sulfuric acid from a battery he was experimenting with through the wooden floorboards and onto his boss's desk. Inevitably, he was fired the next morning. His life seemed to be an absolute failure. Here he was, many years after giving up on being a telegrapher, he was an inventor. All the experiments he did as a kid helped him learn almost everything he knew about chemistry and electricity. He learned his skill of being a businessman by selling the newspapers and candies on the trains. He made hundreds of inventions and innovations in his life. He was stuck on this one though. It was the light bulb. Of course, the light bulb had already been invented, but it was not practical for commercial use. Every design for the electric arc lamp, this was also what it was called, would burn too bright and too quick or was too expensive to be practical for everyday use. Thomas Edison wanted to make something that would burn slowly and not so brightly and it needed to be cheap. He and the group he worked with worked hard at developing the bulb. They already had an idea of what the light bulb was going to be like. It would be a glass vacuum with two wires that would slowly burn a carbonized filament with electricity. They had a problem with finding the right filament to use. After trying thousands of carbonized filaments, they tried metals like platinum but had no luck. So they went back to using the carbonized filaments. Edison couldn't take it anymore. He locked himself in his private lab so that he might come up with the right filament. This is what it came to. Over $100,000 in research and over 6,000 samples of filaments were used from around the world. He never gave up.
After a few days of being locked in his lab without sleep, he found the correct carbonized filament to use. The one filament of over 6,000 was a piece of carbonized cotton thread. When he put it in, an orange glow illuminated the room for many hours. Light bulbs were now long-lasting, cheap to make, and safer than the gas lights used at the time. With the creation of the light bulb, electricity was needed to power them. Power plants were built to do this job. There's now more than 7,000 power plants spread around the country, bringing electricity to every home and lighting up our houses and streets.